I'm going to talk today about um, the work I've been doing with Cambridgeshire County Council um, in developing their local guidance uh, for SUDS, what they call their SUDS handbook, um, but also a little bit of insight into their experience um, in becoming a SAB, um, SUDS approval body. Um, so, Cambridgeshire, I'm sure you all know it. Um, I came up with five key words to describe it, and, um, and it ended up sounding like a slug or some kind of fungus when you add them all together. Watery, dry, green, complex and growing. Um, but it is uh, an area which is very used to water, it's very low-lying land, um, areas of fens, but also, strangely, one of the driest places in the country. Um, so they have real water resource issues in terms of um, water supply. Um, so suds very much do have that dual function um, that Paul described. Um, obviously, great biodiversity aspirations as well. They have a really good green infrastructure strategy for the, for the county. Very complex in terms of stakeholders. Um, five local authorities we were covering, both Cambridge City and, and the wider districts, and 63 um, IDBs. Um, so it was a challenge in terms of um, stakeholder engagement. Um, and huge growth targets. Um, so with the government's agenda on localism, um, it's very much important to get a local response and get communities involved and, I guess, not dictate from the, from the top to build places that, that people want to live in, um, but also get the densities involved um, that you wanted to deliver that. Um, so this is where my strange little icons come in in the corner. Um, but that, that's representing the county themselves, and overwhelmingly, they were up for it. Um, they saw that they needed to take on the SAB duties, um, but they weren't afraid of that, and I think that's very brave. Um, but one of the reasons why um, they were okay with that um, is that they'd done it before. They believed in SUDS. SUDS were a good idea. They probably put that note up on Paul's slide saying that they are. Um, so they took on the duties with vigour. Um, I'm sure you're all familiar with these. I'm sure they'll be mentioned today, so I won't spend too much time on them. Um, but the SAB... Uh, has a responsibility once it's enacted um, to approve SUDS applications um, and to adopt those approved SUDS under the national standards. Uh, this is one of the schemes um, that I think Bob designed, um, which um, really proved um, everything to the councillors. So from a political level, Cambridgeshire was already on board. Um, they've got the, the technical evidence um, that SUDS work, um, it's just a matter of getting everything out of SUDS, getting the maximum benefit in order and designing those into communities, effectively spreading the word. So what did they do? Um, they had a lot in the we don't know box, um, but they decided to get going anyway. Um, there's no point, I guess, being paralysed until national government um, sorts itself out, so they want to be proactive. Timescales seem to change every month, it seems, um, but it gets pushed further and further out in terms of when um, DEFRA will announce the final proposals. Um, we haven't had a lot back yet. Um, but Cambridge had decided to at least start talking to get everybody in a room, um, so talking to key partners like the IDBs, like the local authorities, like the Envi Environment Agency, um, and, and the community representatives they have um, to kind of get prepared, I guess. Um, they also did um, a bit of procurement work, different software, started in training. Um, so they were unsure again about what's going to come first. Should they just be looking at master planning of major developments? Um, and they've um, allocated funding up front to appoint a team leader. That's still on hold at the moment until we have that warning that we're all go. Um, and uh, we weren't sure how much training would be provided nationally. I mean, forums like Sustrain are a great thing, um, and it's good that Syria is taking the lead on that. Um, but Cambridgeshire are also looking to develop bespoke training. Details of funding, we don't know, but they did allocate a budget, which was very good at them, um, and forward thinking, and national standards still waiting. So the key things that I'll talk about today are they want to start engaging about that national standards, what they could mean, um, and also develop a SUDS handbook, which um, employed local standards. Um, so with that big challenge, the complexity, um, you end up, I guess, orchestrating a very wide group of stakeholders, and how do we get them working towards a common goal for Cambridgeshire? These are the people we had in the room. Um, they've all got different hats on. 
Um, so the policemen or the planner, um, they like rules. Um, they love density, um, but they also love open space. So they'd like to be pleased in, in that respect, but they also like multifunctionality. Uh, de developer, we had a few of those in the stakeholder consultation room. Um, they were concerned about cost, of course, um, and making sure that it's just doing what's written on the page in terms of requirements and legislation. So you've got to be mindful to, to tick their boxes. Uh, ecologists, out for a sunshine day, it looks like, but they are concerned, obviously, about the biodiversity focus um, in Cambridgeshire, of which water is a great part. Uh, water engineers, um, got to meet those flooding standards. Um, we also want to engage, I guess, developers' design teams. So we're conscious that the handbook should very much be design code kind of style so that anyone in the design team can pick it up um, and understand what's going on here. It's not just the engineer, but also inspire um, the architects and um, designers. Um, so they'll be interested in pretty pictures, effectively. What's, how can we create uh, the icons, the brands from, from SUDS? Um, landscape architects could be very excited about water features and, and trees and gardens, anything that's going to pep that up. Um, sustainable building these engineers often aren't much of a part of SUDS, but they should be. Um, there's code for sustainable homes targets to meet, both in terms of SUDS themselves and in terms of uh, water reuse. Um, so they'll be saying, Cambridgeshire is dry, can you help me out? Can you collect rainwater water for me um, and pump that back into gardens or homes? And the heritage officer, um, pretty much just concerned, don't make it look out of place, um, don't make it look weird. Um, we do have great heritage in Cambridgeshire of water management itself, um, and there's very much to learn from in that. And so all of these voices we need to bring together into one document, I guess, to say what is locally valued about SUDS and what do we want in Cambridgeshire. Um, so why did we want it? Um, just to bump up some enthusiasm, I think, um, to start with, to encourage that, a range of suds. I think we want to get away from just ponds. Um, so how can we get a, a good understanding of all types of suds out there? Uh, localize is probably the key aim of the handbook. Um, so we want to create what's called the local standards, which the national standards do refer to, that there can be local standards in place. And most importantly, the mechanism, I guess, for enforcing those local standards is to get your local planning authorities on board to actually write it into their local plan policies and refer to the handbook itself. So it's absolutely crucial that the county just didn't do this on the side. They needed to do this to underpin that partnership working and to support the local authorities in doing that. Um, and to inspire a more collaborative approach. Um, so there's some nice pictures of uh, cheery people at the workshops, um, but we did do very hands-on engagement with a range of um, stakeholders to get them thinking about what they wanted for Cambridgeshire, um, did a range of typologies to think about the different development types you're likely to get in the Cambridgeshire area, whether that's agricultural development, for example, large-scale development, small-scale industrial sites, um, and to get people to articulate what types of suds and, and the benefits of those that they'd like to see. Um, so we have the national standards, or whatever they will turn into, uh, but the ones we're basing on at the moment um, give us the technical framework, I guess, to deliver SUDS. Um, but they miss out on the sexiness as such. Um, there's no, I guess, um, invigorated design um, that comes from those standards. You need to put the creativity into them to really make a place to make great SUDS. Um, so. And considering water reuse and recycling um, isn't in there to start with in the hier hierarchy, so we wanted to add that in. Amenity, biodiversity, heritage, quality, safety, and multifunctionality, all of that needs to be produced through local guidance um, to produce what we want. Um, so we used a series of exercises with people. Um, we had millions of pictures on the walls. What do you like about different SUDS features? What don't you like? So that we can come draw out what um, some design guidance effectively might be. Um, these are the ones that, I guess, tick the box in most people's um, books. Having a lively landscape, um, something that looks great wet or dry um, is, a, is a key feature, something that's appropriate to its urban context, to its heritage, um, but also appropriate to, to countryside. Um, a bit of colour, kept natural, um, and really make it a 
bit playful. Can you incorporate it with public art? Um, can, can it be ed naturally educating? What people didn't want, um, there's a lot of, I guess, hot air about um, health and safety in SUDS, but actually if you try and design that out, you create risks in itself um, most of the time. So fencing things off um, or large concrete walls um, can become unsafe and over-engineered um, and effectively isolate the poor SUDS from their communities when they should be a part of them. Um, I'm sure you've seen that one before, but uh, hilarious putting a sign up um, to warn about the SUD being there and fencing it off. Um, why don't we design it into the place to start with? Um, so that's what we were trying to avoid. So the handbook um, has the tagline of bringing sexy back. doesn't actually say that in the handbook, but I wish it did. Um, and sets out two types of local standards. Um, the first ones are about local standards for practice. That's what people should actually do when they're designing things. So there are design guidance about actions, effectively. And the second one is local standards for the actual components. I don't really like the words components, but it's all we could come up with. The actual systems, whether it's a swale or pond or wetland. Um, and there's specific design guidance for those. So starting with practice, um, we ended up with 20 of them. So 20 different things you need to think about when you're designing SUDs. Um, right from, the, the, I guess, the, the macro to the micro. Um, you can start with simple things, I guess, like planning and SUDs from the start, master planning, um, setting aside space, thinking about multifunctionality from the beginning. Um, water reuse first was an important one for Cambridgeshire, um, so collecting water for reuse, that's the first step. Um, linking through every scale, so thinking about SUDs as a treatment train, not just a pond at the bottom of development. Um, and a landscape-led approach about placemaking, um, about regeneration. Um, so that's applying right through to how you connect to existing communities as well as new ones. Um, Cambridge Heritage was a very important one here. Easy maintenance, matching the density. We also did a few different typologies of um, how you could design into streets, how you design into open spaces, how you match the density, how you cope with flat sites, as Cambridgeshire is very flat. Um, and industrial sites as well. Um, these are just a few snippets of what the pages look like. But we designed it to be very visually engaging. Um, local standards for studs components themselves. Um, I mean, this is really drawing on what's already out there. I don't think we need to explain or de redesign studs components again and again. It is handy to have a, a quick summary. Um, so that's what we aim to do here, but most of the time we're referring back to Syria guidance, etc., for the design detail. Um, but just to inspire a few ideas, so it's effectively like a flip book of um, design ideas, which is more engaging for, for landscape architects and, and urban designers, so they can see what fits where and what fits with character. And we also did local standards um, for different things, like what we're trying to achieve with biodiversity, different planting, with technical design, with hydrology, for each one of those components as we went through. Um, and there's some design details included in that. Um, right, the nitty gritty bit um, was actually trying to interpret what the national standards are at the moment and talk everyone through that. And I think that was really valuable to get everyone's views out in the room and try and talk through how we'd actually do this in theory um, if we were approving um, and adopting SUDs. Um, so we came up with a lot of flow diagrams which are based um, off the national standards, but also introduced Cambridgeshire-specific ways of working, so pointed to key um, local stakeholders, um, but also introduced new concepts to that where they thought they would be easier to work. Um, they were really concerned about one aspect where the local authority effectively receives the application for them, and once they tick the box to say it's received, then the, the clock starts ticking on the planning application effectively. Um, they were concerned that if everything they needed wasn't in that application pack, then they're in with a problem because they've got to start going back and forth um, and it gets a bit awkward. So they um, came up with this letter of compliance concept where developers are effectively encouraged to have those pre-applications um, discussions with the SAB directly and to say, this is what I'm planning on submitting. Can you get give me a letter saying it ticks all the boxes. So they've already done that approval before it then goes in, um, saying that everything's there that they'd expect, um, and then you know, the timeline is, is smoothed. 
Um, and we tried to convey, I guess, what the national um, standards were saying in terms of what uh, local author or county authorities are expected to adopt and what they're not um, through uh, visual demonstration of, of what's hot and what's not, effectively. Um, so I guess that this um, effectively brought all the stakeholders into one room and took them a long way. Um, and I think it's a shame that we've lost the momentum um, with the national standards coming out because I think that they were pretty much ready to go, but now we're all kind of on a sliding timeline. Um, so the timing of this kind of thing is very important, um, but I, I don't think that should stop us. We should always start raising awareness and, and use sustrain and its resources and importantly, get new people within the room, um, get those planners and local authorities, uh, heritage people, um, drainage engineers, everyone in the same room, throwing around ideas of what they want, and then we'll be much better prepared. That's it. Thank you. <laughs>